Zeus, Hades, Poseidon, Ares, Apollo, Achilles, Odysseus. Uh, the names, those names, and many of the stories of the gods and heroes of Greek myth are quite well known to us. Uh, but lesser known are the precursors to the Olympian gods, the Titans. Uh, the Titans were essentially replaced and overshadowed by their own progeny as the Titans sort of faded into obscurity uh, in our collective imaginations. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today here on Pulp Hero Audio. I want to talk about how that those pulp heroes of yesteryear, of decades gone by, those pulp heroes, they are in essence the titans uh, of our own American uh, mythology. And when I say American mythology, I'm speaking, of course, of the American comic book superhero. Uh, which, of course, has grown beyond, you know, comic books to, to movies, video games, uh, all sorts of things. So, in this video, I want to examine a couple of the more iconic American superheroes and look into the myth of these heroes uh, to find their pulp hero roots. Now, the first hero I want to look about, the first hero I want to look at, sorry about that, the first hero I want to look at is kind of the original superhero in most people's mind, Superman. Uh, Superman, who was created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster, uh, first appearing in Action Comics number one. Uh, back in 1938. Now, Superman, uh, for for most people, you know, he he's the father uh, of the the American superhero. Uh, Superman, you know, he he's the Zeus of the lot, you know, uh, or, or Odin, the All Father of the bunch. Uh, if you want to bring in another non-Greek uh, mythic pantheon. And, you know, Superman, regardless of how you feel about him, you know, even if he's not your favorite or whatever, you know, Superman is still, you know, he's very much ingrained in American pop culture. You know, Superman is, you know, a part of the fabric of the American experience. I mean, you know, pretty much everybody knows something about Superman and his story. Uh, but if you really dig into what makes Superman tick, uh, I think you will see pulp heroes uh, there in his DNA, if you will. And the first of these pulp proto-superheroes uh, that I would place in Superman's direct literary lineage is John Carter of Mars. Uh, John Carter, who was created by author Edgar Rice Burroughs, uh, first appearing in the pulp magazine The All Story uh, in 1912. So a few decades before Superman. And John Carter, uh, you know, he is the Superman story in reverse. Uh, or perhaps I should say that Superman is the John Carter story in reverse. Because, you know, again, we all know the story of Superman. Superman, the, the, the son of the alien world of Krypton, you know, which orbits a red sun, and then he's transported to Earth, 
uh, where in the environment of a planet like Earth that orbits a yellow sun, you know, he gains amazing abilities and powers, which he then uses to become a great hero and a sort of savior uh, to this, this alien people. You know, alien being, you know, humans of Earth because he's from Krypton. Well, you just, you know, flip that around and you've got John Carter decades earlier uh, who was a son of Earth who is transported to the alien planet of Mars uh, or Barsoom as the, the inhabitants in the John Carter stories call it. And wouldn't you know, the, the unique environment of the red planet yeah, I know it's still the same sun as Earth, but hey, it's the red planet. Uh, the unique environment of the red planet uh, then gives human John Carter uh, some physical abilities uh, beyond those that he had on Earth. And this, much like Superman, allows John Carter to become a great hero and a savior to the alien people of Barsoom. Uh, so, John Carter, Superman, it's almost the same story, just in reverse. And John Carter was first. Uh, might also mention, you know, in the, in the process uh, of the story and everything, uh, John Carter falls in love uh, with the bold princess of Mars, Dejah Thoris, uh, just as Superman would become smitten, uh, with the intrepid Earth reporter, Lois Lane. So we've got a romance between the alien and the, the native inhabitant of the planet that he finds himself on. Now, I think our other major proto-Superman would be Doc Savage. Uh, and you could, you could find elements of Doc Savage in a lot of superheroes, but in Superman especially, I think you're going to see a lot of Doc Savage uh, represented there. Now, Doc Savage, you know, first appeared in Doc Savage magazine, number one, uh, back in 1933. You know, so five years uh, before Superman came on the scene. And Doc Savage was in many ways a literal, you know, Superman. Uh, lowercase s, uh, a Superman. You know, he he possessed abilities. You know, beyond those of the average man, of the average human being, making him sort of a Superman. Uh, Doc Savage, uh, interestingly, ha had a nickname. Uh, he was the Man of Bronze, and of course, we all know Superman's nickname, the Man of Steel. You know, so, so it's almost like we're progressing here, you know, from bronze uh, to something stronger, you know, that being of steel. So from the man of bronze to the man of steel. Uh, Doc Savage, uh, guess what his name was? Uh, Doc Savage's full name was Clark Savage Jr. And as we all know, Superman's alter ego would be Clark Kent. So, both guys named Clark. Coincidence? I think not. Uh, hey, uh, remember from the comic books and the movies, you know, Superman's got that really cool hangout of his, you know, up there in the Arctic called the Fortress of Solitude? Well, guess what? Doc Savage has one of those, too. Uh, it also was in the Arctic, and it was also called the Fortress of Solitude. You know, so same exact name, same exact location as what they gave Superman in later years. So you take a little John Carter, you take a little Doc Savage, you know, put them together, throw your, on, your own spin on it, and boom, you've got Clark Kent, Superman, Kal-El, the last son of Krypton. Uh, so next up uh, on the iconic superhero list that I want to talk about is Batman. Uh, you know, if Superman 
is Zeus. You know, if Superman is our Zeus, uh, the king of the gods, reigning from the sky above, then Batman is our Hades, you know, the, the lord of the underworld, you might say. And Batman came on the scene uh, just a mere year uh, after Superman uh, in 1939 uh, in Detective Comics number 27, uh, created by Bob Kane and Bill Finger. Uh, but who were the pulp titans that formed the building blocks of Batman? You know, now one of the most popular, if not the most popular, uh, super, superhero of all time. You know, some would say he is even eclipsed uh, Superman. Well, I think the most blatant one, the most blatant pulp hero influence on, on Batman was Zorro. Uh, Zorro, who was created in 1919, so again, a couple of decades before Batman. You've got Zorro created by the American pulp writer uh, Johnston McCulley. And, you know, just as Batman has his, you know, animal totem, you know, the bat, of course, you know, he's Batman, uh, Zorro uh, is Spanish, uh, in this case, for, for fox. Okay, so we, in essence, have two uh, animal-named, animal-themed heroes. You know, you've got Batman, you know, the bat, and you've got Zorro, you know, the fox. And, of course, you know, if you look at the two characters, the aesthetic of the characters is very similar, uh, as they each dress all in black, uh, with a mask, uh, a flourishing cape, uh, using a variety of different weapons and things. And then if we look, you know, beneath the mask, uh, Batman's secret identity, you know, is largely an act, you know, as he spends his days as this kind of uh, lazy billionaire playboy Bruce Wayne. Zorro's alter ego is very similar. Uh, beneath the mask, Zorro is the foppish Don Diego de la Vega, uh, you know, a member of the Spanish aristocracy. So again, you know, a rich man, you know, pretending to be, you know, kind of lazy, you know, not very physically capable at times, that kind of thing. Uh, very similar between them, between Bruce Wayne and uh, Don Diego. Of course, both men are, are fighting against, you know, uh, perceived injustices and things like that. Uh, they carry out this fight from a cave headquarters. Yeah, Batman's got his Bat Cave, and Zorro's got his, I guess you could say, his, his Zorro Cave, his Fox Cave, his Foxhole, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, located beneath uh, their very fine respective homes. Uh, you know, Zorro's uh, uh, mode of transportation, his most frequent mode of transportation, is his black horse, uh, Tornado, uh, who really serves as, you know, an analog uh, to the Batmobile. And, uh, you know, and Batman's co-creator, uh, Bob Kane, you know, ha has even just flat out said, uh, made the claim at least, that Zorro is indeed one of the influences for Batman. Now, I think our other direct forerunner to Batman is The Shadow, uh, who first began appearing in uh, pulp, pulp, pulp Publications, uh, great alliteration there, some pulp publications as well as radio dramas uh, in the early 1930s. Uh, and the shadow, you know, he, he takes the Zorro motif, you know, the, the dressed all in black, that kind of thing. Uh, shadow, he takes that whole motif into the modern day, uh, at least, you know, the modern day of the 1930s. 
And he did that several years, you know, before Batman. Uh, And in The Shadow, we see that character really amps up, you know, a lot of the mysteriousness factor that Zorro had. Uh, A lot of the detective qualities are are kind of brought to the forefront. Uh, his, His master of disguise skills. All those things that we now kind of associate with Batman, you know, were very present there in the shadow. Uh, you know, the shadow even taking on uh, this air of almost edging right on the supernatural, you know, as we find that, you know, he's this uh, great world traveler. Uh, who has traveled the world learning all sorts of mysterious skills uh, in the exotic places of the world, which is, of course, an element that would eventually be added to the Batman character as well. You know, even if you're not familiar with the Batman comic books, you perhaps have seen movies like Batman Begins, you know, where he travels all over the world uh, learning all sorts of things, you know, in in the Far East and places like that. But we see all that with the shadow first. Uh, So there you kind of have it. I mean, you know, what would Superman and Batman be, you know, Superman and Batman, who in turn have influenced many other uh, American comic book superheroes, you know, where would they be? Where would Superman and Batman be, you know, without John Carter of Mars, you know, without Doc Savage, Zorro, and the Shadow? And let me tell you, you know, that is by no means an exhaustive list uh, of pulp heroes who have influenced uh, these two characters and characters like them. You know, I could have easily explored, you know, some of the elements of characters like Tarzan, uh, the Phantom, uh, Flash Gordon, and many others. Uh, But my whole point here is that, you know, when it comes to our modern American superhero myths, you know, these characters that are now making, you know, billions of dollars at the box office in their movies, you know, the roots of these characters, you know, they run deep and they run straight to many of these often overlooked and I feel very underappreciated uh, pulp heroes of the past. Uh, who I personally think, you know, still have a lot of life left in them if, you know, given a chance and, of course, put in the right creative hands that has a real vision uh, for what to do to these characters to be true to them as well as presenting them to a modern audience. Okay, guys, as always, thanks for listening. Uh, And be sure to like and subscribe. I always appreciate that. And please uh, let me know your thoughts about this or anything else uh, in the comments. I certainly love reading those comments. We'll talk to you later. Bye.